Welcome to this Drupal 8 day session. I'm delighted to welcome Christy to talk to us today about the Paragraphs module. Christy is a Drupal backend developer and a module developer and she's been working with Drupal for about 10 years now and this is, well, it seems to be taking over in Drupal 8. The Paragraphs module is becoming more and more a feature of many uh, high profile and uh, professionally designed Drupal sites and that's going to be the topic of Christy's presentation today. Welcome Christy, I'm going to hand it over to you. Sure, thank you, thank you for having me here. Um, now I work at a, a basically a digital agency that our clients are primarily associations and nonprofits. So the reason why we really grasp on to paragraphs is that um, we were actually, the people that are managing, our clients that are managing their sites are not technical oriented people. They're ones that just want to get in, get their content in and be done with it. Um, so we wanted to give them some flexibility without really giving them all the keys to the kingdom and letting them run amok and do whatever they want. So let me, so I, the reason why I'm bringing up this slide, this is our sort of standard company definition slide. I wanted to bring this up just to explain that even though I'm going to talk about what paragraphs can do for content editors and how they're constructed a little bit, we also have information architects and we, that are helping define these for us and we have our designers that are putting their unique spin on the, the look and feel. So it's paragraphs is something that crosses all of our parts of our process, not just development and not just front end, but it also crosses a lot into the user experience and information architecture and design and everything like that. So I just I said that was just sort of a quick um, little thing that it's not just a module that developers are going to use. Um, what are paragraphs? So if you aren't familiar with paragraphs, they're sort of modular pieces of content that are used kind of as a field on a, on a node. So I don't want to say block because, you know, Drupal uses blocks for um, a lot of, you know, a very different use, but they're kind of just pieces of content that you can place on a, um, on your node that you can rearrange and, and they don't just have to be like a field or, you know, even like one field collection where it has to go here, it gives you a lot of flexibility on where these are going to be in order and what types of you can do and really giving your content editors, you know, the ability to add, you know, visual elements to a page and make these pages look very different from one another. Even though we're still pointing them towards structure, we're giving them a lot of that flexibility. So it allows them to choose on the fly from a predefined style list of paragraphs. So as our information architects will actually define what these are, our developers will build them, our designers will come up with the look and feel, and our front end developers will actually, you know, implement that look and feel on them. But it's still a defined list. It's not the whole entire whatever I can do with this. We're giving them a defined list to keep their branding and to keep their, um, you know, uh, look and feel aligned with their style guide, but yet still give them a lot more flexibility. Um, content editors can reorder the paragraphs to make them more visually interesting. So they don't have to have a body field and then maybe, you know, some kind of, you know, video in the middle and then they have something underneath it. They can actually reorder these to make them much more visually interesting and just, and just give them some flexibility. Um, I was just kind of lay uh, some examples of paragraphs. I mean, an example would be something like a three column call out. We can allow them to put some calls to action that are shown in a three column format. They can put this at the top of the page. They can put it in the middle of the page. They can put it at the bottom, however they want. Another idea for a type of paragraph, and these are ones that we'll show um, show you actually that are on one of our um, one of our development sites, is an accordion, which is a great way of allowing your content editors to, to be able to display a lot of content but not have this page run all the way down but they can put them into an accordion it makes it very easy for them they don't need to know javascript they don't need to know css or any kind of you know adding classes or anything like that they just need to fill out a form and their accordion will be styled for them and another simple example would be some image and text um, something that you could say an image next to a block of text if you had an infographic and you wanted a little block of text that explain that infographic a little bit, you know, that would be a really good uh, use for something like a paragraph. 
So this is sort of an example of sort of what paragraphs are. You know, traditionally in before paragraphs, we had, you know, you could have a big body feel that you could actually make some visual interesting things like adding an image right here, putting some text underneath it, embedding a YouTube video. So you can, you know, you could do that. But the really nice thing about paragraphs is that we're actually um, breaking these down to sort of modular pieces. You know, we have our sort of our body sort of type of long text with a WYSIWYG editor um, here. We have our image next to some text here. Then we can add another bot, you know, basically kind of a, a long text field. We have a video with some side text and another long text field, and it can kind of keep going on. Um, but this way, again, if you look at the page, you're unhappy with it, instead of having to go back to your body field and cut, paste some, you know, text and move it, you can just literally drag these up and down and we'll show you how you can do that. So you can say, okay, instead of putting the image, I want to swap the video and image. And you, you can actually drag these down and, and be able to look at different layouts, kind of see it, um, play with it a little bit, maybe add some other elements and then see what your page looks like. So it gives them a lot of flexibility on that. So kind of a quick thing before we sort of dive into looking at what these actually do and, and why do we choose paragraphs um, within our, our company to use. Uh, we had a lot of clients on WordPress and they really like the visual component of Composer. So if you haven't used that before, it really it allows you just to, from a library of elements, you can drop things in, you can actually even create columns. We didn't like some of the flexibility because some of these pages looked really busy and they weren't very visually appealing, but we did like the fact that you could add an accordion. You can add some uh, an icon with some side text. You could add all these pieces and they can make one landing page look very different from the other and the content editors could do it. They did not have to have a Drupal developer. They did not have to modify the content type. They didn't have to do that. So that was one of the things that we were really looking for when we were looking through some of our options and paragraphs did fit everything that we wanted to do. You know, we wanted to give our clients freedom to create their pages, but still have structure, um, not allow them to just go crazy and then start making their site, you know, look usually like a lot like the before, you know, we got to it. We wanted to give them some structure and some style guide and just some, um, they, they could add those, but they weren't going to vary from what, what the site is supposed to look like. We did look into Panelizer. It was a really good choice, but we did find some challenges with our clients, and that was just because they're not technically, usually technically oriented. The ones that are putting content on the site um, were having very difficulty actually using it. They weren't being able to find, there was a lot of options. They weren't being able to find what they were looking for. Um, they didn't like the user experience. And so we, we kind of said, let's put Panelizer aside and let's look at paragraphs and see what we can do with it. And the re another reason why we really like paragraphs is that we can reuse these from one site to another. So if we create an accordion paragraph for one client, then the actual structure to actually use it on another client is very similar, but the styles will change, colors will change, maybe instead of being more rounded, it might be more square to go with their design. But the actual functionality of that paragraph is very similar. So we were fine that we were able to be a lot more efficient by defining these paragraph styles, ones that pretty much every client's going to want, and we were able to re reuse those from one client to the next. And so now I wanna go a little bit on a demo and show you a little bit about using paragraphs and what, we, what we've kind of been able to do with them. So I'm gonna, this is sort of just a demo site. You'll see there's a lot of demo content on this. This is just because this is something I was playing with. I'm gonna go ahead and create a page. So we're just gonna go content, add content, and just page. And you will see, it looks like a traditional Drupal 8 um, layout. We have our title, we do have a summary field because we do use those in views and things like that. So we do have a ability to put that summary up there. And then you'll see, we have this field right here called paragraphs. So what I'm gonna do is just do a quick title here. And so we're going to see what our paragraph options. So for this particular client, we have defined a list of, and I'll show you once we kind of look into some of these paragraphs, you know, what, how these are constructed and what they look like. But we have some image with site text, an accordion, a long text item, which would just be kind of like a text um, field, 
a slideshow. So we're actually enabling them to put a slideshow on any page they want. They don't have to have um, a content type for slides and they don't have to have that, um, you know, being able to try to, you know, have a developer place it for them. They're actually able to place a slideshow wherever they like. We have a video with side text, um, a three column call out, which is going to have a little bit different styling than the rest of the site, so, or the rest of the sort of text um, areas of the site. Uh, we have a call out bar. We can actually use this to add views. Um, this was a little bit challenging, but we were able to get it to work, which is really great since we can actually put paragraphs on top and then put a view on the bottom or put a view in the middle. So um, we used to use a lot of views reference fields to actually add a view to a field and still enable our clients to be able to update the bot, like sort of the header text without having to go to the view itself. So we were able to put views as a paragraph, which has been really nice. And then we have a, a block here. This would be adding like a custom block that they could add to the site. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go ahead and we'll add one of these. Uh, we'll go ahead and try just a long text item for, for uh, first, just to show you how very sort of simple this is. So when I add a long text item, I get basically a um, field with a WYSIWYG editor, rich text field. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab some lorem ips in here so I can just place it inside. There we go. So it's just as I said, this would be like any type of body field or any other type of long text field that you would use um, that you could enable them to. They can even add images and things like that in here. Um, but again, we're trying to sort of keep them using those paragraph types, but we do give some flexibility there. So that's a very simple one to add. So we have a long text item on top here. We'll go ahead and add another one. So we just go back down to our button and we're going to say, I'm going to go ahead and add an accordion. Now with some of these like slideshows and accordions, because they're, we're allowing them to add unlimited amount of accordion items, so that way they don't just have two or three, they can add 10 or however many they like. We actually kind of break these into two paragraphs. One is called like the accordion container. And so that's just when I click on here, add accordion, it's going to give me accordion and then it's going to say accordion item. So basically we define another paragraph type called accordion item. item which is going to actually have our fields inside. So when I add accordion item, we get two fields. We get a header and a body. So a header might be item header one, whatever you'd like. If this was for an event, you can make this accommodations. You can make it agenda. So you can sort of make that whatever you'd like. And we'll put some text in here. And then it says add an accordion, you know, accordion item. So we're going to add another one. And we'll say, header two and put some text in here. Again, this is a WYSIWYG editor. You could put in images or something like that if you wanted to. Links to other types of content. And we'll add one more. And we'll do that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and save the page so we can look at what it looks like right now. So we'll go down and save. So now we see we have our paragraphs page. We have our long text item right here that we added, and we have our accordion that is going to behave the way we'd like it to, to behave. It's going to be a traditional accordion, but it was so simple for someone to add that. They didn't have to know anything special other than filling out that form. So it, it has really given us a lot of um, just adding, giving our clients just that empowering them to actually be able to enter the content. So I'm going to go ahead and look at a couple of other accordion items here. Or I'm sorry, another other paragraph items. So we, we can see we have our accordion. And we'll go ahead and add another long text item in here just to give it some, uh, some text to sort of break elements up. And then we'll go ahead and try a video. So a video with side text. So this is uh, enabling us to add our, here's our video and our text. So we have a different kind of different ways. What I'm going to do is show you YouTube. So we've actually made it where you can just put in this, uh, the YouTube ID. So I'm going to go ahead and put in some text here. We'll actually make it a little less text heavy. And I'm going to a um, Drupal 8 brief introduction YouTube video. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take this ID number. Okay. 
Now all we want is the actual ID number here. And we'll go ahead and save that. So now you see our long text item, our accordion, another long text item, and then we have our video with side text. So the really, like I said, the, the, the great thing about this is that they can go ahead and lay out on all these paragraphs on top of each other. They can go ahead and say, okay, I'm not really happy with some of this. I'd like this video to be above this long text. So they can actually just move it just like that. It's just that easy. And now the long text we had on here is below. The um, video with side text is above. And um, when we save, you'll see the changes. So now we are videos up here and our long text is below it. And we'll show you a couple of other examples of what you can do. Um, then we'll kind of look into, once we're done with sort of showing these examples, I'll just kind of go through how these are, are constructed and how they're added to the page. And then you can even, you have a little, some flexibility on um, what types of paragraphs are available on what types of um, content types. So um, if I click down on this, oops. Let me see. So, okay, we can go ahead and add an image with side text. So this is really good for infographics. So I'm going to add an infographic here. I'm going to put our alt text. And we'll go ahead and put in, okay, I was going to, we'll put in some text. And we'll save that one. And then I will show you the slideshow next. So we have now our infographic on the side here with our text on the side. So you can see I said you can really do a lot with these pages. I want to show you the slideshow because I think that's another special one that we have done, enable, giving our, our content editors the ability to add those. Let's go down to the bottom with all of our paragraphs here. And we want to add a slideshow. So this is a lot like the accordion that you have that slideshow container and then you have slide items in inside that. So um, I'm going to add a slide item. And when I do that, I get this predefined list of fields. Um, URL would be, we could just, you know, go to wherever we wanted here. But this would be, most likely would be a um, link within the site itself. And I can put, go to Google for the link text. We can put in some summary text. So we'll just go ahead and put in a little bit of text here. I can add an image. Oh, let me uh, go ahead and pull something off. And we'll add some test slide. And this would be tab text. So I can go ahead and put a smaller uh, version of that. I'm going to go ahead and add another one here so we can look at two. So I have my first one up here. We'll go ahead and do our second one. And we'll add another image. Okay. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save. All right, we have our ones that we added before, and now we have our slideshow. So here is an example of uh, everything is done. We can page back and forth on the uh, tab text. So that gives us a, a small amount of text right here. Our larger amount of text that we added is in here for that um, summary. And then we have our button for, um, you know, go to or read more or something like that, whatever you'd like on here. 
But you can see, well, content editors could really use this on their pages. This could be a great for an event page for them to put pictures of the event or the um, the accommodations or anything that they would want to do that. Um, they could actually be linking to different pages on their site when they're talking about registration for that event or the agenda or uh, getting exhibitors and things like that. So you can really do a lot with that. And just like any other paragraph, we can, um, if we add that slideshow and we want it to go ahead and appear towards the top, we can actually grab it and move that. Let's see. Let's see where I put this. Let's move it up to the top. My screen's kind of shrunk here, so it, let's see. Move it above the accordion. Grab this. See if I can get it above the accordion without messing with all the other. Okay, well, we're going to put it right there, but we can go ahead and move that. I think it's just because my this resolution on my screen. Oh, wait, maybe I. Okay, I actually moved it to the top there. So um, here is um, that on the top. So I'm going to go down to the bottom and save. And so you can see that I have this really nice slideshow on top. I can kind of give a summary of what my page is about. And I have all my paragraph pieces below. And as I said, it is really giving them that like Visual Composer and WordPress, we're trying to take some of the strengths I think that WordPress has and putting it in Drupal because Drupal has a lot more strengths as far as the back end and how to work with it and, you know, all the views and things like that. We're trying to, to enable our clients who are possibly used to something like that or used to being able to, we have a lot of clients that are coming straight from just HTML where they can just do anything they want. So limiting them to just some fields that we've defined for them is some it is great at first, but we find that then they try to do workarounds and it just doesn't give them a really nice um, way to, to be able to do that. And the nice thing about this too is if for some reason they come up against something else, it's a new paragraph type, it's very easy for us to add it. We don't have to change the structure of the page. We just need to develop the new paragraph, the theming, you know, the theming around it, and then we can add it to their site and uh, they can go ahead and place it on pages like they've done everything else. So now I've sort of showed you like what does this look like when we actually put it on the page. I want to show you what paragraphs look like a little bit behind the scenes so we can see exactly what's happening here. Um, if you look at this site, we have under structure, when you enable the paragraphs module and you also need the entity um, revisions, um, I think it's entity reference revisions module, which enables you to sort of combine these paragraphs together like accordions or like the slideshows. So when I click on paragraphs types, you'll see that this is where we have defined all of our paragraphs. So we have our view, we have our three column callouts, um, accordions, image with slide text, all of those. So when I look at these um, accordions, let's say for instance, because that's uh, one of the little bit more complicated ones, you can see that we have accordion and accordion item. So we'll look at the accordion item first and then we'll look at how we kind of put that container around it. So when I look at accordion item, it's very much like looking, you know, working with other types of field collections. I can, uh, when I add my paragraph type, you know, we're gonna get the ability to add fields. So you can see I have accordion item body, which is just a, a text formatted, a long text formatted field. And our header is just a text playing field. And that's all we have to do as far as development goes. Just go ahead and add those two fields to it. And um, you know that, that is all you need to do. So then when you're looking at adding something that you can add more to, so you want to have something, some kind of container that those accordion items are going to live inside, we can look at our accordion. And when we do a manage field, you'll see that what we've done is we actually have an entity reference revision. What that's going to do is allow us to choose that paragraph, that accordion item paragraph, as a um, sort of field inside, as a reference field. So you'll see that we have said basically what type of reference um, this is, and it's a paragraph type. And we said that we want to reference the accordion item paragraph type. And if you look um, down, let's see, go to fields, settings. 
that we have allowed unlimited number of values. And that is what's giving us the ability to add more than one of those accordions or more than one of those slideshows. Um, other types of paragraphs, you don't, want, you don't want them to add 10 videos to a video with side text. So in that case, when we look at that one, let's go back to the paragraph. We, um, for video and side text, we are gonna show that, you know, we have, te we have this uh, text field, we have our video embed, and we have our YouTube ID. We are using different ways of, of putting that uh, video in. The one that we showed was this, just a plain text field that allows us to put the ID in, and then our front end developers would go ahead and uh, add that ID into that sort of wrapper that needs to go around the video. But you can see in here, this is much like any other formatted text field. Um, when we look at the field settings, you know, we're limiting the number of values to one. So that's the one that is, a lot, you know, kind of limiting them instead of allowing them to add a whole bunch of, um, you know, video IDs or something like that. Um, so you're, you're able to have a lot of structure around these paragraphs. And so as we've defined all of these paragraphs, the three column call out, the accordions, the blocks, the call out bar, a slideshow, the video with side text, as we're defining all those, um, we are able to actually add them to content types. And the nice thing is you can have this very long list of paragraphs, but not all paragraphs are gonna be needed to be added to all content types. Um, you might have a very particular type of a, a blog, for instance. You want your blog articles to look very similar, but you're wanting them to add maybe a video to it to make it very easy for them to not have to worry about embedding it within the, the WYSIWYG editor. In that case, you'd maybe only want that one video with side text to a blog, but you wouldn't want them adding slideshows and you know other things to a blog article. So under, as far as like, you know, what you'd need to do with this, so we can look at what our paragraph, or I'm sorry, our page content type looks behind the scenes. So here's our page. We're gonna look at the manage fields section. So you can see we have, you know, some typical fields. We also have one called paragraphs. So when you look at this add field, you will actually see in here that once we add that, there is actually a paragraph type field under that reference revisions. And that's all you would do is be adding a paragraph field. So when you add that paragraph field, you will see when I edit that particular one that I have said I can check all the paragraphs that are available to that item. So basically, you know, we have allowed for this particular one, um, these types of paragraphs. Now, the reason why you don't see accordion item checked or slide item checked is because we actually want those to live within the accordion or the slideshow. We don't want them just picking an accordion item by themselves and putting it on the page. We actually want it under the whole container. So those, that's why those two particular ones aren't checked and you will not want, you know, you won't want to have those available to them but you can limit that amount for one con content type to the next. And so that way, still, again, you're still giving them structure and you're still giving them sort of a structure piece to um, actually be able to um, do that content, but not giving, you know, if, for instance, a lot of people use home page slide or home page content types to allow them to pass their content or their actual home page through a workflow. You know, that's a case where you might want to limit the amount of uh, paragraphs on there just because you don't want them junking up the home page with a lot, like 10 slideshows or something. Um, so that would be an instance that you would want to limit them. Or if you have a very prescribed article like blog or something like that, you would want to limit them. But then in something like page or landing page, you may want to give them pretty much everything so they can really make those. Now there's one paragraph I still want to show. Um, before we sort of open things up to um, questions. And then, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit about theming in just a minute, and then we'll, we'll open up to questions. Is that we've actually been able to get that a view to actually show up in a paragraph. And that has been a really nice um, thing that we've been able to do. And I wanna sort of show you this in action. We're gonna go back to our page we were playing around with, this test paragraphs page. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a, go ahead and edit that. So we see we still have all these paragraphs. Now, just like anything else, we can remove paragraphs. So if I wanna remove that bottom one, I can go ahead and do that. So, you know, you don't, you know, you 
still have a lot of flexibility on just traditional editing. And I'm going to go ahead and add one below. And we're going to call it a view. OK, so once we do that, it is asking us the views field. So what we're saying is it's saying, OK, what view do you want to actually put on here? So I'm just going to find maybe just uh, recent submissions for something. And then again, this could be any view that you make. If you have any arguments to pass the view, um, you can go ahead and do that. This one we don't need to, so uh, we'll go ahead and save. And you'll see at the bottom, here is our view that we have. Um, and it's again, it's it allows you to create these pages that are very, you know, again, developer, I mean, we love this as developers because we have so, you know, our information architecture has very particular layouts for our pages. And we've been able to do things like, for instance, on one of their, one of our pay, um, clients, we had to have an image on the right and text on the left, but they also want to do an image on the left and text on the right. So instead of making a paragraph called image left, text right, and then image right, text left, to have two different paragraphs there, and allow them to kind of you know alternate them. We were able to add some styling um, options in there, such as you know just do an image field, a text field, and then a selector that said image right or left, and they can select it. It would add that class to it, and it would switch, which makes it simple if they want to add something in the middle. They don't have to then delete paragraphs and redo them because they were on the wrong side. They can actually just toggle that little selector. And that way it's going to swap that image over to the other side to give them sort of that alternating look to the page. Um, with views, I mean, you know, views you can do an amazing amount of things. And so by adding a view to the middle of the page wherever you want, it could be on the top with a bunch of stuff on the bottom with a bunch of calls to action on the bottom. Or you can have a slideshow on top with a view in the middle and some other things on bottom, it, it has really given us a lot of strength and flexibility and our clients absolutely love it. They, uh, you know, we've, again, our Drupal 8 sites that we have in our company are, we're just rolling, uh, launching a bunch of them actually before the end of the year, but we've done training and our clients have run with this. Um, they have been able to they were actually requesting change orders for new types of paragraphs because they're like thinking of all these neat ideas they can do. So it's given us, a, you know, I said, just a real good mix. Again, we can reuse these. So when we create a slideshow like this, the, all the pieces of the slideshow are pretty much typical from one client to another. It's the layout, it's the design, the colors, um, the pages might be on the top here or maybe at the bottom on a, you know, a little bit more traditional. And so, you know, we've been able to reuse all these. So I want to talk a little bit about theming and then we'll go ahead and open up for questions. So let me go back to my slideshow. Now I am not a front end developer. I'm just going to say that up front. Um, but I, we have some great front end developers um, at, at our company and I basically, uh, pretty much uh, mined his brain to uh, get some information about some theming. Uh, we have found that basically the best approach to theming is to actually have folders for each paragraph. So if you have an accordion, you're going to want to have in your theme file, you're going to want to have a folder for accordion that contains your twig files, your CSS, and any JavaScript files, and you know, any JS files that you need. Um, that is mainly for our use. And number one, it's, it's definitely more organized and we can find things, but it's also because we like to reuse these from one client to another. So if we build one for accordion, it's really easy to take that and put it onto another site and then do our tweaking from there as far as the, the needed, uh, anything that needs to be changed. Um, our paragraph elements are sort of treated as library. So you know, we're using that theme library YAML file to define and register these parts when we, since we have these in these separate folders and we're you know, being able to um, sort of compartmentalize these paragraphs. So then it's really easy for us to use it. And basically the theming wasn't that different from theming other elements in the site. If you had an, you know, a view that output it in an accordion on this particular page, Yes, I mean, you know, you're using a view to do it, but the theming part itself wasn't that different using paragraphs or, you know, than traditional fields or doing something different. So we found that it really, you know, it gave a lot of um, benefits, but we didn't really find a lot of, uh, we found a couple challenges and I will 
go through that on the next slide, but it didn't have a, as many challenges as we thought it was going to. So there's our challenges. Um, basically just a few. Um, sometimes our designers love to do one particular, maybe accordion style or slideshow that was different from, an, from all the others. So we um, worked to try to get a unique ID to be placed on each paragraph so that it could be styled independently if need be. Um, so that was one thing that, you know, these are sort of one paragraph, you know, will have the same class name as another of the same type. So if you do have things that you do need some certain styling on a particular page, um, having that unique ID was, was helpful. Um, they're, be they're best in sort of one column templates. Uh, we do have paragraphs in our sort of, a, you know, templates that have a main body, you know, content area, and then maybe has a right column on the side. Um, we, we have, you know, we do, do do those, but we prefer the one column layout. It's just that there's a lot more difficulty with designs because when you're talking about uh, maybe a call out bar that goes across that you could say something about, you know, need a quote, um, you know, and have a button on, a, you know, request an estimate or something. That call out tended to have a different color background. So maybe it was on a white, mainly, you know, the content was white. It would have a blue background on this bar that went across. So when you had things like right columns, it would look odd that that didn't extend all the way through that right column. So that was, that's some difficulties that we have found that we're working with our designers on to sort of come up with, you know, other ways of dealing with sort of that right rail type content. And the, what I'm saying is reuse paragraphs is that if a client creates a call out bar on one page, right now they cannot just take that thing, I mean, they can copy it and then paste it, but it's not like they can make a, you know, like an entity reference or something to that and use it on multiple pages. So when you have to change maybe a phone number on it, um, you know, you are having to change it on every page. It's not like you can say, you know, this one thing. But on the flip side of that, you know, what we've, what the way that we have dealt with that is things that we know that may change throughout multiple pages that they want to use as paragraphs. We've actually made as custom blocks and then we have made like a block reference. So we can pick that block on the field, show it, and if they change the custom block, it will change it on everything. But I'm just talking about when a client just uses, they, you know, create their own paragraph, they place it on a page, you know, they're happy with it. Now they want to put it on six other pages. They're going to have to cut and cut, you know, cut and paste. And if things change, they're going to have to change them on all six pages. If they aren't using, you know, some other type of like a custom block or, you know, some other type of reference um, to other content. So that pretty much goes through most of the demo. Um, what I want to do is basically open it for questions. If anybody has any questions, um, I believe that, you know, you can type them in to the, the little box on the side. So if you have any questions, oh, go ahead. Yeah, Christy, you, um, hey, you made a little bit of an understatement there. People have a lot of questions. <laughs> okay. you, you seem to have picked people's interest. Um, so given that there are a lot, um, I'll try and run through them as quickly as possible. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, let, me, let me start at the top. Um, okay, the first question that came in was from uh, Doug. Um, this sounds amazing, but for, um, but mainly for the, um, Okay, this sounds amazing and powerful, but uh, is this all a little too click and draggy for them? Is it uh, essentially a noob tool only? I don't think so. I, I think that because, I mean, I said as developers, uh, we have had a challenge. I mean, I said our information architects are amazing and they create these amazing pages and they don't want all the pages to look alike. And, you know, the one thing about a CMS, you know, using like Drupal, is that it assumes a structure. It assumes a structure around it. It assumes that there's some sameness going on um, from, from one kind of content to, then to another. And so um, when we had these crazy layouts that we were given, uh, we were having challenges building these things. And then once we were having challenges building them, because we were using panels and things like that, and we were using that to do most of our layouts. Um, but the problem is, is that 
when a client wanted to change it, then they were having to call us or they were messing it up. And then we were having to go, I mean, we've had clients edit panels and completely destroy things. Um, we had to go back in and go do that. So it's given us, I think, as developers, it's given us a lot of what panels can give us, but yet doing that in a way that can be changed easily later. So like pulling things like views, I mean, you know, our trickiest part about views was when we had views with exposed filters and using that within a paragraph. In a, in a panel, not too hard, you know, or using blocks or using other types of layout tools, not that hard, but in panels it was a challenge. So by getting that to work, just to kind of work with how we had to set things up, we were giving our developers an easy way of, of sort of quickly laying out these pages, laying out the pieces and then handing them off to somebody else to actually enter in the content that they needed to enter. So it has been a challenge for developers, you know, for us to use these and try to figure it out. But so I wouldn't really call it a noob tool. I would call it more of a tool that we have embraced to allow our clients to stop calling us for every little content change or slight change on the site or if they wanted to add something. Um, it has enabled us to actually use, I mean, we have a lot of maintenance agreements with our clients, so it's enabled us to actually use that those hours for really kind of cool stuff. Um, you know, adding some bigger features to their to their site or adding, you know, different types of paragraph, paragraphs. Cool. Uh, how much of this is exportable? Do you know uh, either via configuration management or features? Um, we have been playing around with that. Um, we are having some success with it. I think there just needs to be a little bit more playing around. And right from right now, we have been able to. Um, export, you know, we've been able to export some parts of it. Um, basically, the theming obviously needs to be sort of, you know, put into the new theme as far as the pieces go. But um, we are still working on the exportable, you know, configuration syncing um, parts of it. So we, I can, you know, hopefully we'll have a better idea soon as we hit this a little harder since so we're launching some of these sites and we're trying to merge everything that our clients putting in on staging with all the development that we're putting on dev. But we are definitely working on that. Uh, is it allowed, is it possible to create custom fields along with the title and body? Um, custom fields, as in, let me go uh, pull this up. Okay. Siddharth, I guess maybe that question was answered ready for you. Uh, feel free to ask back if it wasn't. Yeah, I just want to make sure that, um, I mean, you can add way more than just text and body text. I mean, we can, any field that you can put in a content type, you can put in a paragraph. Um, Okay, question from Doug. I assume we have plenty of Twig template files which can be used to override the markup for things like the accordion? Um, so you are, are, if we're talking about what comes with paragraphs or are you talking about what you're actually developing on our own? Uh, paragraphs does not come with anything already set up. There might be some people working on those and being able to you know, put those up as we sort of move on through our Drupal 8. But as far as... Um, as our paragraphs, we're doing custom. And I have my my front end themer is graciously attending um, this show because he was gonna have a, if there was any theming questions, he was gonna help me. But he said told me that there's one to two paragraph twig files, so you can create one for each type if you use like you know that dot theme file. So you know you are using twig files for those paragraphs, but it's not. I mean, when you say comes with it, I just want to make sure that we know that there, we actually are developing these ourselves. Um, where these are custom to what we have done because there's not it's not like there's an accordion paragraph that you can download from drupal.org and then go ahead and use we have actually created that just using fields and then using our um, actually making our our uh, twig files and our JS files and our um, and that, that within that folder and then you know referencing that as a library uh, okay, question from Danny. Um, for using a view as a paragraph type, you mentioned that was tricky. Uh, was it custom code you used or something in contrib? Um, basically, it was tricky just because we were having trouble setting up some. The, the using a view itself, like the one I showed, is very simple. If it's just a basic view, outputting content, um, using basic arguments, things like that, that was not hard at all. What was more difficult, and I think I can actually probably show you one of these page on, on this site here, was ones, let me see, if 
I have a current one here. So it was like something like this. Um, the more difficult the view was to actually um, create a little bit, it was just we were having trouble getting uh, exposed filters with that would, re, you know, with the Ajax that would reload on the page. Um, so you can see here, this is not showing a lot of content just because there's really not a lot in here. I was going to see if we had any other sample ones. But we were having to work with just the views configuration itself and getting that to actually take, you know, going ahead and, and picking one of these chapters, although this isn't going to show much just because there's nothing here. But that was tricky. So we had to, we had to do a little bit of custom um, JavaScript um, just to help us get that working. We're hoping as paragraphs, you know, ages a little bit and the views integration ages a little bit that this will become easier. Uh, are there pros and cons to nesting paragraphs versus, versus using field collection? Um, field collections, I think, are, if you're talking about just putting field collection on a node, I think the reason why we would do paragraphs is just because you can, you, you can just identify these a little bit, they're a little cleaner to look at on the back end because you don't have all these sort of fields. Um, I can say with a paragraph, I mean, you can look at this page here, for instance, that, you know, we have our paragraphs of our, you know, three column call outs and we have some other pieces as well. I think this one's a little different, but um, I think just, it's just a better user interface and it's giving them a better way of visualizing it and dragging and dropping. And it's, it's just a little easier for them to use. And I just think that it's because we've been able to sort of keep these modular that we're able to, you know, using that, all that theming that we've done, we're able to move that from one side to another a little easier than field collections. I don't think uh, field collections works really well in Drupal A. As far as I remember, I thought there was a little bit of a bugginess of that. Okay, is the is the image feature compatible with the media module? So this one, I believe we're using the media module here. Let me go back to my page. So this one here, we're not using IMCE in this case. So I was going to look at this, um, the slideshow, I guess, that would be the best one to do. That's at the top. So when I, um, sorry. Okay, add slide item. So when I did that image, you'll see that it is opening. So I can look at my, our fields listing. And you can see that this is using the media browser. Okay, great. Uh, is the accordion or slide item actually a paragraph within a paragraph? Yes, it is actually a paragraph within a paragraph. So it is a reference, like you make the accordion item that has all your fields in it, and then you make a, another paragraph called accordion or container or whatever you'd like to call that, and you're refer actually referencing the paragraph inside. So it's a reference field. So yes, it is a paragraph within a paragraph. Cool. Um, with the the image browser upload, do you know what that's using? Is it using drop zone or a different uh, uh, JavaScript? I don't, we do have, we are using, I was just gonna look at our module reference. We are using, I think drop zone, but I thought we were using it in different. Let me see here. So yes, I guess yes, we are using the drop zone entity browser widget. Okay, we've got we've got two related questions. Uh, so when it comes to the slideshow, uh, do you know what's used to generate that? Is it uh, is it bootstrap or is it a JavaScript library or what's going on with the slideshow? So I'm going to, can we go to the next question? I'm going to see if my, uh, he's writing me right now. So let me, let me get what my front end developer is sending me and let's move on to the other question. I'll come back to this one. Cool. Uh, can we use paragraphs for the homepage? If so, how? Yes. Sure. I mean, it's a, I mean, basically it depends on how you're constructing that homepage. Uh, we typically like to have either a landing page type content type. So for instance, I think in this case, this one is actually a landing, we're calling it landing page, but again, a lot of times we will call it homepage. And you'll see 
that right here, I am on my homepage right here. We have some, some things, you know, on here. And when I look at the back end of this, I am looking at paragraphs. So for instance, you would just, you would have a specialty content type for your homepage, either call it like, you know, homepage is your content type or a landing page or something like that. And by doing that, you can put different, the paragraphs that you want on there. And we really like to use that homepage content type concept instead of using like panels or, or some other way of constructing that homepage, just because we can send this homepage through a workflow. So someone can create a whole new homepage, add a bunch of different elements, they can send it on through a workflow, get it approved, and then once it's approved, it'll replace the one that's there. So, um, because you know, we have a mechanism that's gonna be taking the, the, the latest content type that's, that's published and that particular kind. So that's how you would do it. You would actually create a, a uh, content type for your homepage and then you could add paragraphs like any other fields. Um, let me go back to that question. Um, it didn't use a module, but it, uh, it was using slick slider, he thinks. So, um, so it wasn't like a module, it's just a JavaScript library of slick slider. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and move quickly. Um, otherwise, I think we're going to be here all day. You've, <laughs> you've generated a lot of interest with this paragraphs topic. Um, uh, what would be a good resource on how to create the paragraphs from scratch? Or are these just created identically as you would do a normal content type? It's pretty much created like you would a normal content type. I mean, I, you know, I said, you can, I'm on a blank one right here. I mean, literally, if I'm creating a paragraph, you are just adding a paragraph type, titling it, I'll just do an example. And then once you save it, you're going to get the very similar screen that you would in content type. So this is a managed field screen. You can add fields just like you would any other content type. Um, any, any fields that are available there are going to be available here. So you can see um, it's, it's a very simple process as far as creating those. Um, and I said, Paragraphs does have a, uh, has a pretty good uh, documentation on Drupal 8, so that is definitely a help. If you do any searching on paragraphs, there's a lot of really neat blog articles that come up about paragraphs as well. Okay, we've, uh, we've got someone, uh, Bogdan here, who actually uses it at work. And I guess this is a possible downfall. He says that it's becoming too complex. We get to the point where we have multiple paragraphs that are similar, like text and image, but one allows left-right image alignment, another one allows a background image, another one allows top-bottom. Uh, he wants to do some spring cleaning, or just, I think, in general, do you have any advice on not letting the paragraph types just multiply and get and just get complex? really long, and, yes. Um, and especially when you have ones with similar properties, it's just alignments or, the, you know, the placement is a little different. And that's where we have... Um, been able to do, you know, we've been able to add a field, uh, like a radio button field. So, um, you know, one of the select fields and just do a radio button that says left or right. And based on that, we can add that, you know, we'll make a selector called, you know, has a class in there and in left and then their other class, you know, name and right as far as building that select field. And then we use that to um, add into the styling and using that on the image itself will align it left or right. So we've been, we have have been able to streamline ours down a little bit to say that we could have a, you know, image and text field. And then when they actually open it up, it's going to have a little radio button saying image alignment left or right. And that is going to change it from one side to the other. So yes, you can get a little unwieldy with this paragraph listing. Um, but if you try to look at where your common paragraph types are, and what, you know, what are the differences between two? And maybe it's something very small. You can probably combine those together. Uh, okay, a related question. Is it easy to configure the admin uh, so that it's easier to drag and drop items? Some kind of toggle or yeah, collapse? Um, we, I do want to look into that because some of these paragraphs are really long. So if you had a slideshow with eight different slides in it, that's going to be a very long paragraph listing. So that is something I definitely want to look a little bit in more into. I haven't found a great answer yet. Um, I was going to go look at that one. I haven't had a really great answer yet, but I'm one, I, I would love to be able to get these collapsed. So you could, you know, collapse down that paragraph in the edit mode 
and that way it would be much you know you would just be looking at this you know the these line items so um, I'm, I'm, I'm currently kind of looking at that because again, this accordion, it gets, can get really long and dragging and dropping is really, so it'd be great if you could just sort of collapse them all down and then you have one that said slide item, one underneath it said accordion and you could drag and drop them that way. So there are definitely some user experience improvements that can be made here. Uh, in a related topic, do you know if it integrates with front end editing, inline editing? Um, we typically don't have a lot of inline editing on our sites, and the only reason why is because Drupal 8, and again, I haven't looked in the last like couple weeks, but when we were doing this, Drupal 8 and, and quick edit or inline editing and uh, workbench moderation weren't working well together. So uh, we haven't actually tried to do the inline editing yet. I'd be interested to see if that, you know, how that works, but I would, be, I would think it would be just like any other field. I mean, it is a field on a content type. So... I would think it would be treated like any other field, but again, our clients are all sort of workbench, they all want approval process and things like that, so we have disabled our inline editing for our Drupal 8 sites right now. Okay. Uh, do you know anything about paragraphs in Drupal 7? We've got a Drupal 7 question. Uh, sure. We've actually used them in Drupal 7. Once we started getting onto them in Drupal 8, we started using them in Drupal 7, so they work very similarly, and we've had great success with that. Okay, the question was, uh, he installed it on Drupal 7 and there weren't any bundles to find. Do you know if there's a way to import the default bundles? Um, I just, when we were doing paragraphs, we actually just created our own uh, paragraph types. So when you're talking about bundles, um, I mean, I can definitely, you know, I said, if, if I can take a look at what we did in our Drupal 7 sites, um, it's been a little while, so I can't, exactly remember what, but we, I don't remember having any issues because we were creating some accordions for some of our clients to be able to use on their um, events pages. Okay, uh, next question. Do you know if any of this can be done uh, programmatically rather than through the UA? Uh, as far as creating paragraphs or placing paragraphs? Um, yeah, can you create paragraph types, create content using paragraphs components? Uh, that's very interesting. I haven't tried that one yet. Okay. So I don't know the answer to that question, but that's a very interesting thing. Yeah, definitely. Okay, Maybe we great have, to have modules that you could just turn on, and it would give you your accordion paragraph types. Uh, that would be great. Yeah. Okay, now we've got a pretty good question uh, from a guy, uh, Jerun, and it goes, "I'm the creator of paragraphs." Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank way, you very much. <laughs> good way to start the topic. Um, uh, I just want to let you know that everything from paragraphs is exportable with configuration management in Drupal 8 and features in Drupal 7 as okay. it uses the Drupal entity and field API system. Okay, great. Well, there you go. That's a good answer to that question. I said that we're just now hitting that part um, that we're trying to merge everything together. So we don't, I, I said we haven't um, completely gotten everything as far as that goes, but that, that's good to know. Cool. And uh, Jerome, welcome. Um, seems like people are really interested in your work. Um, okay, a couple of Twig questions. Uh, is it possible to see any examples of the Twig files that you'd use for, for paragraphs? Um, I probably could go ahead and go ahead and show one here. I sort of shut everything down. Let's see. So I know that we um, are, for this particular site, I think we only may have a couple of them that have sort of that in the different folders. Let's see. That's uh, not the one I want here. Let's see. See where he put them. Templates, okay. Here we go. So this is not one that we are actually, I'm trying to remember because I saw, I knew that we were actually doing these and uh, this is a little different because I don't think we put these in separate folders, but I thought 
we were doing that for, I guess it was for a different site that I was looking at. Um, but this is definitely our, this, okay, this site that I'm using right now is one that we developed a while ago. Oh, the, the microsites. Okay. And, um, and so, uh, let me see if I, um, have the, okay. So basically you can see that we have our, I'm going to go ahead and show you the twig file for accordion item. But this is not one that we're, we're actually kind of going through and cleaning these up to put them in separate folders. But this would be an idea, this would be an idea of our accordion item twig file. Cool. Um, I can okay, show this... you a slideshow too here. So that would be a slideshow for anyone that is interested. Oh, thanks. Uh, okay, this seems like an important question. Uh, is content within paragraph translatable? Um, I would, yeah, I would say it was, it's using entity. So yes, I mean, I'm, I'm sure the, if the Jerome is still on the line, you might give us a definite, we do not do many sites in multiple languages. So we haven't run up against that, but I would, you know, if, again, it's using the entity API, um, then yes, it should be all translatable. Cool. Okay. I'm going to have, <laughs> the questions keep coming. So I'm going to, uh, keep moving as quickly as I can. Um, on the content edit screen on the right hand side, under under published, there's something called rabbit hole settings. Oh, <laughs> uh, that is a module that allows us to. Um, that doesn't really have anything to do with paragraphs, but it's a it's a module that allows us to set um, settings based on if something should be seen uh, or an access denied. So in case you had some kind of content type for maybe a slideshow or something that shouldn't be seen on its own as a node by your anonymous users, we can actually set global behavior saying that if they actually get to this node, like they type in node two, five, six, and it's a slide item or a call out or some other type of sort of administrative type content, um, that we can set saying that they should be able to access that. So I okay. guess it's something about going down the rabbit hole, but um, anyway. Yeah, that sounds like a can of worms. Uh, <laughs> have, you, have you added a block reference as a field in a paragraph, similar to adding a views reference? Yes, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'll show uh, really quick. We can go ahead and add a block. Let's go down to the bottom here. So uh, it would, this is just sort of an auto select, so I can I'd start typing in something. So you can go ahead and this would be any of some of your custom blocks that we've created. So for instance, um, I don't want to use any of those, but uh, I can use my preferences as a good one. And then we'll save. So, uh, oops. So yes, it's a good way of adding. Um, so you can see it's, it's, oops, let's see, where did it go? Did I not save that? Maybe I didn't save that. Oh, it's restricted access one. Let me use a different one. Okay. Let's gonna see if I can find something that actually had some decent content in it. Let's see. Okay, you can see it right here. It's a little block, but this is all coming from our um, our custom block library. So if you see all of those things I was looking at, this is the, the one right here, ex exclusive affinity partner. So it's just coming from your custom block library. So yes, it de definitely works great. Cool. Okay, I want, I want to thank a lot of the attendees who have been helping clear up a lot of the questions by um, yes, definitely. Answering back and forth. Uh, I see one here asking how difficult it might be to migrate from a normal content setup into paragraphs. Um, we have not, I actually have not had to do that. I mean, you know, obviously there's the old manual method, you know, you have to create plant your paragraphs and, and move those over. But um, I don't, I mean, again, it's all content in a database. So I think that if you had some really distinct pieces of content, like if you knew that your body field should go into a long text field instead of body, or you knew that the pieces of them would go into, you know, 
mirrored images or mirrored uh, paragraph types, you could definitely script something like that. Great, and I think that's the end of the questions, but we do have a reply from Jerome, the developer of paragraphs, who says, yes, paragraphs are translatable. Yeah. It does require a specific configuration. The module will link you to a documentation page that tells you how to do it when you try to configure translations on the paragraphs field. Okay, phew. Oh, thank you for... <laughs> for answering all of those so well, Christy. Uh, well, thank you for my front-end developer, John, to Jerome, that you guys were, were great at helping me with the questions. Okay, and um, yeah, I, I, I didn't realize that um, uh, that would be such a hot topic, but um, it's one of the best attended presentations of today and almost certainly the most questions we've had so far as well. Okay. So thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Christy. All right, thank you very much. And uh, thank you guys for attending. Um, thank you for coming to Drupal 8 Day. We have a lot more presentations still to go today, so hopefully there's more that will be useful for you. And yes, a lot of people asked if we'll put the videos online. We're going to record all the sessions, edit them to remove any, uh, any extra fluff or mistakes, and then we'll publish them to YouTube. And you'll get a, an email with a link as soon as those videos are online. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day, whether it's a Drupal 8 day or whether it's somewhere else. Thanks. Thank you.